Our political editor, Andrew Clonell, with some breaking news in relation to one of the ministers who's faced a fair bit of scrutiny over the Ministerial Code of Conduct, Andrew. That's right, Kieran. The Minister for Regional Development, Territories and Local Government appears to have misled the Parliament. Yesterday, Minister Christy McBain was asked in question time whether she or her husband had received any dividend from shares she had been forced to sell after she discovered the share ownership was in breach of the Ministerial Code of Conduct. Did the minister or her husband receive any dividends from shares they held while the minister was in breach of the Prime Minister's Ministerial Code of Conduct? I give the call to the Minister for Regional Development, Local Government and Territories. No. Will ASX records show that Ms McBain's husband did receive a dividend of 14 cents per share distributed by the Australian Foundation Investment Company on August 30, the day before she sold the shares, according to parliamentary records. This sale date, August 31, is also the day Sky News broke the story Ms McBain was in breach of the Code of Conduct for having transferred her shares to her husband. In July... Prime Minister Anthony Albanese banned ministers from having shares and, importantly, banned them from divesting those shares to their spouses. So let's have a look at that question and answer in question time again. Did the minister or her husband receive any dividends from shares they held while the minister was in breach of the Prime Minister's Ministerial Code of Conduct? I give the call to the Minister for Regional Development, Local Government and Territories. No. That dividend from the Australian Foundation Investment Company was distributed by the company on August 11, according to these ASX documents, and received August 30. So this morning I contacted Christy McBain and she claimed to me she could answer the question the way she did because she was never in breach of the Code of Conduct. She told Sky News this morning that she could say no to that question on whether her husband received dividends because it suggested... She had breached the code. She did not deny receiving a dividend from the shares, despite me asking her multiple times. Never have I been in breach of the code of conduct, Ms McBain said, which is why I gave that very specific answer. Well, that's not what she said to Janie Seal on Sky News Regional last Friday. She said then that transferring the shares to her husband was the wrong thing to do and she should have disposed of them earlier. I disclosed what I had done because it was the right and proper thing to do. Um, I had transferred those shares to my husband prior to seeing a, a copy of the written code of conduct. Uh, once I knew that wasn't an adequate divestment, we put in place uh, the measures to sell those shares and at all times I disclosed what we were doing. We should have sold those shares earlier and I was the first to acknowledge that, uh, but at no stage was there a conflict of interest. All right, and how are you feeling about it now? Uh, look, it's, I guess it's probably a bit embarrassing that you didn't get it done soon enough, but uh, at all times I disclosed uh, and at all times there was uh, never a conflict of interest uh, in play, so uh, the matter's now done. It was on August 31 this year that Sky News revealed that in breach of the Ministerial Code, Christy McBain had divested shares she had in seven companies to her husband. It was a breach, as I say, because the Code announced in July by the Prime Minister required that ministers did not own shares, but it also says if ministers had to divest shares, they could not do so to their partners. Since Sky News broke a series of stories around ministers having shares when they were not allowed, Assistant Trade Minister Tim Ayres sold his, and Assistant Health Minister Jed Carney sold out of all their managed funds after Sky revealed they had significant interests in health companies. The new ICAC might raise fears amongst politicians they can lose their careers. But perhaps they should also be reminded that there used to be a higher bar for disposing of ministers and a breach of the ministerial code or misleading the parliament used to be enough for that, Kieran.